I can't tell you how many times I've tried to write the beginning of this video. It is so difficult to relay what it is about Pyramid Head that causes such unease, even for the most desensitized souls. After many starting attempts and erasures, I oddly found my answer when I admitted defeat. You can't define Pyramid Head's elusive, terrifying quality no more than you can define what darkness is in common terms. Darkness and all the evil it symbolizes, it just is. You can't question it, you can't argue with it. It is an eternal force, one that will never go away and one that we might never reconcile ourselves to. It is always there, bent on causing us the most extreme negative emotion possible. It is that undefinable force that defines Pyramid Head. He symbolizes that black, negating force in all its unstoppable brutality. However, unlike that formless darkness which Pyramid Head embodies, he himself has an actual form. A muscular male with a tattered white robe and a cast iron helmet, along with many deadly weapons. Fans have theorized about why he takes the form he does and what his ultimate purpose is. Some characterize him as a purely evil demon destined to haunt all who enter Silent Hill. Others theorize that Pyramid Head is actually trying to help James Sunderland to his end goal. As for myself, I have rediscovered some information regarding Silent Hill which not only might definitively prove who Pyramid Head is, but seemingly legitimizes almost every major theory that has come before, as illogical as that may seem. Needless to say, there are spoilers ahead. Let's start with what we know for certain about Pyramid Head. The Book of Lost Memories describes him as follows. He takes the appearance of an executioner of times past, but is actually incarnated from the part of James's consciousness that feels that he deserves punishment. As I have established in past videos about Silent Hill, the town has the power to give form to one's innermost thoughts. Simply put, Pyramid Head is the personification of a part of James Sunderland's mind. Pyramid Head has his face covered because his designer, Masahiro Ito, wanted a monster whose face could not be seen. Before he chose a pyramid to cover the face, he sketched the character with other masks. Ito soon found that the masks he sketched did not communicate the otherworldly terror that he sought. He figured characters like this might as well be any other human with a mask. He settled on a pyramid, seemingly because he took inspiration from drawings he did back in 1995. Drawings which show a mechanical creature with a pyramid as a head. The shape of the pyramid was inspired by a German experimental interceptor known as the Lippisch P-13A. The edges of the helmet were inspired by the skirt of the lower hull of the German tank King Tiger. Finally, his robes are inspired by one of the angels worshipped by Silent Hill's cult known as the Order. That angel was Valtiel, revered for being the closest of all angels to God. Valtiel was honored in the hopes that the Order's members might create a closer relationship with God. Like Pyramid Head, Valtiel has robes, a butcher's apron, gloves, and bloodstains galore. Not to mention that his face is also concealed. Beyond these few details, there is little that can be said about what Pyramid Head is. There is only clarification about what he is not. Despite what later incarnations might suggest, the only canonically correct representation of Pyramid Head was in Silent Hill 2. His appearances in Silent Hill Homecoming and elsewhere were made by corporate directive, and not with the continuity of the first four games in mind. The fleshy substance under the helmet is also non-canonical, with Masahiro Ito saying he had nothing to do with that. He has stated firmly that that what is under the pyramid is a head. These are the few primary facts regarding who Pyramid Head is and is not. Several questions still must be answered. For instance, why is he wearing a pyramid and not something else? If there's a head under the helmet, what does the head look like? If he's a manifestation of James's imagination, why does he dress like one of the Order's former cult members? I will attempt to answer all of these questions, but I must first establish my overall theory. In past videos I have done on Silent Hill, I have evoked the theories of famous psychoanalysts to help explain the town's horrors, specifically the theories of Sigmund Freud and Carl Jung. I did this because the Book of Lost Memories explicitly states that the game borrows from psychoanalytic theory. For example, in my most recent Silent Hill video, I proposed that the character of Maria embodied a Jungian concept known as the anima. It's a bit too complicated to summarize here and now, but what's important is that those who watched the video seem to agree that my theory was correct. Following this, 
curious, I wanted to see if psychoanalytic theory applied elsewhere in the Silent Hill universe. Given that Hiroyuki Iwaku cites Freud as a main inspiration, I wanted to see if Freud's most famous contribution could be applied to Silent Hill, his division of the human psyche into three parts, id, ego, and superego. To help simplify things, this division can be illustrated with this comedic depiction, the angel on one shoulder and the devil on the other. The angel is the superego, the moral component of our psyche that strives for self-betterment. The devil is the id, the hedonistic component of our psyche, which seeks immediate gratification of the human instinct. The ego is us, trying to mediate between the desires of the superego and the id. In regards to the id, because it contains several undesirable traits, we tend to repress them into the unconscious part of our mind. All of our tendencies towards wrath, gluttony, sloth, pride, envy, greed, and lust are pushed down into the darkest depths of our soul in the hopes that they never surface, so that we may play the part of a civilized being. The problem is, every time we repress them, they eventually come back stronger, seeking horrific revenge for their suppression. What Freud's successors argued should be done to avoid the mental pain that comes along with repression is to find ways to integrate these negative traits into our conscious being, so that we may bring them under control. This way, the negative traits don't govern us, we govern them. If Silent Hill gives form to our unconscious thoughts, and Hiroyuki Iwaku has taken inspiration from Freud's psychoanalytic theories, I think it's reasonable to suggest that Pyramid Head is the personification of Freud's id. Decorated in filth, blood, and rust, Pyramid Head embodies the worst aspects of masculine sexuality and violence. Though James may initially succeed in repressing him through combat, he always comes back with greater force and agility. First, he comes back with the Great Sword, which kills with only one swipe. After that, he comes back with the Spear, allowing him to move faster but with the same lethality. Finally, he returns with a double. By accepting or at least entertaining the notion that Pyramid Head is the id incarnate, I find that many other theories regarding Pyramid Head become validated. For example, some believe that Pyramid Head is actually trying to help James towards his ultimate goal, but others point out the impossibility of this theory because Pyramid Head, at many times, clearly tries to kill James. With my theory, I believe that both points of view can be true. If Pyramid Head embodies all the negative traits we wish to push down into our unconscious, one of those traits might be guilt. Now guilt can be a tricky thing. Depending on how we respond to guilt, it can either kill us or enlighten us. For example, when you were a kid and you were caught stealing cookies from the cookie jar, you might feel guilt after your parent reprimands you. By coming to terms with the wrongness of your action, you develop a higher morality. As for Silent Hill, James's guilt nearly kills him numerous times on his journey, but that is because he hasn't brought the guilt into conscious territory. Towards the end of the game, James's guilt can no longer be suppressed, and he must allow the guilt to enlighten him. That way, he can accept responsibility for his actions. In my mind, Pyramid Head clearly embodies guilt in his actions. While he does try to kill James numerous times, he also inadvertently guides James towards enlightenment. When James fights Pyramid Head for the first time, this is an acknowledgement of the guilt. This is a wrestling with the guilt. Once this is done sufficiently, Pyramid Head opens up a pathway that helps lead James to his end goal. On the rooftop of the hospital, Pyramid Head pushes James to a lower level, symbolizing a fall into greater unconsciousness and a greater chance of coming to terms with the guilt. At the end of the game, once guilt has been made conscious, once guilt has played its part, it becomes redundant. This is why the two pyramid heads commit suicide on their spears. The id, and by extension the guilt, have played their allotted parts. Now that I have established my theory, I believe I can now adequately address the previous questions. First and foremost, why does Pyramid Head have a pyramid? on his head. We know that James has visited Silent Hill prior to the events of Silent Hill 2, and it's reasonable to assume he visited the Historical Society building. There, he likely encountered this picture, the Crimson and White Banquet for the Gods. Many fans have noted the red hood and how it bears a resemblance to the red pyramid-shaped helmet, but that doesn't explain why it takes the form of a heavy cast iron burden. In response, I point out Silent Hill's tendency to have basic things change form depending on whether or not the protagonist 
is in the fog world or the other world. If walls and floors can change to rusty chain link fences and curtains of human skin, isn't it reasonable to assume that a hood can change into a rusty iron helmet? As well, we know that Silent Hill's level of decay depends on how much darkness resides in one's heart. If James is destined to give form to his inner id, wouldn't it take the worst form possible? A hood wouldn't sufficiently demonstrate the burden of James's guilt, so it takes the worst form possible. If you want more information on Silent Hill's changing forms, especially in regards to Pyramid Head, I recommend you watch my video titled The Fog World and the Other World, which I will link in the description box. Next, if Pyramid Head has a head, what does it look like? Masahiro Ito has said the following on the matter. I didn't design and make Pyramid Head's face, but I have an image of the inside of the helmet in those days. It's a binded head with many frames. This might be a little hard to understand, especially because Ito is trying to translate his thoughts from Japanese into English, but I think I can explain. Every human being on the planet has an id, but the contents of one's id are not all the same. This is why Ito is insistent on the fact that only James can see Pyramid Head. Another person's id would take a different form. We know this is true because Ito has said the same thing about the monster known as the Abstract Daddy. The Abstract Daddy is Angela's creation, and neither James nor the player can see what she sees. When Ito says Pyramid Head has a binded face with many frames, I interpret this as a face that is constantly changing. Depending on who would see Pyramid Head's real face, his face would take whatever form makes most sense to the person who is viewing it. As for James, it would have to take the form that makes the most sense to him. One major theory is that Pyramid Head's face would be James's face, which would make sense. If Pyramid Head is James's id, maybe the face would be a more decrepit form of James's face, kind of like how Dark Alessa's face in Silent Hill 3 was a more decrepit form of Heather's face. This also explains why Pyramid Head wears the Executioner robes. If James visited the Silent Hill Historical Society in the past and saw the picture of the Executioner, it makes sense that James maybe internalized it. Maybe he associated the idea of pure evil with that image. Thus, upon entering Silent Hill and encountering Pyramid Head, he met face to face with his literal worst nightmare. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to see more videos where I examine Silent Hill's mythology, please click on one of the videos you see on screen now. If you liked this video and want to support the work I do here, the best thing you can do is hit that like button, share the video with other Silent Hill fans, and subscribe so you can see more videos like this in the near future.